starting the coffee with the massively huge chopsticks using the and the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started. But first, Peruvian coffee made cowboy coffee style. I like it. Well, this has been a wonderful coffee tour for those that just like their canned coffee made in a Mr. Coffee Maker. I challenge you to think outside the can. Try something different. And I'm not talking flavored coffees. I'm talking about coffees grown in different parts of the world, in different soils, and that's what gives it its different nuances and notes and flavors. Here's to Peru. Do I have any watchers from Peru? I'm sure I do. Identify yourself. Tell me hello down below. I'd like to know who you are. Did you ever notice that nobody ever says, I'm sorry, I have cardamom breath, right? For you people that are just garlic salt or garlic powder people or chopped up garlic users. There was a point in my life where the only spices that I used was pepper, salt, garlic powder, onion powder, and that was pretty much it. And I don't know what lit the culinary fire under me. I used to cook to eat. Now I cook to enjoy and to relax. And my spice cabinet is massive, and I buy new spices every year, every couple years. I grow a lot of herbs. Before the end of the fall, I pick everything and dry them in a dehydrator, all the herbs. Then I use them throughout the winter. This year I did something that I've never done before, and that was pick all of my herbs, dry them, and put them into one mix. So I called it the 2020 Herb Mix, and it's all the herbs in my garden, all together, in a a certain proportion, for instance, if you put like rosemary and sage, very, very strong when they're dried. If I put equal amounts of them and it would just be like sage or rosemary, you wouldn't taste the other things. I like having a mixture where I kind of get a little bit of everything. And this year's 2020 mix is magnificent. And I made it in the dehydrator that I dry the meat in when I make beef jerky and various dried meat type products. Today I'm going to be drying liver, calf's liver, and I'm going to see how that turns out. That should be fun. But yes, no one ever says, I'm sorry, I have cardamom breath. I'm sorry, cardamom breath. Have you ever noticed that you never heard the phrases shelter in place and stand down until the Obama administration? Never heard those words, did you? Never. And then we got a nice four-year break, but you're going to start hearing them again as violence increases around the world, funded wars, as protests start again, Interesting. They just can't stop calling that capital thing a riot, an insurrection. Really? I just spent the last four years with cities burning down and nobody arrested. Really? Okay. Not being judgmental. Just observing. You must attract the fish to your hook. And if they don't come, you blame the fishermen, not the fish. That was Charles Spurgeon, who said that in 1878. Now there's a good marketing technique for anyone who has something to sell. If that thing is not selling, <laughs> if people don't purchase your product, you blame yourself. Yourself. Try something different. Tweak it. If something doesn't work, Try something 
different. Have you turned off the news yet? I haven't watched the news in five years. Only in the past week have I put a few things on, look at a few things on the web, but pretty much TV news, you know, like the average household, literally, puts on the news at dinner time or while they're making dinner. It's on in the background and then it's usually on, the TV is on, until people go to bed at night, 10, 11 o'clock. When I started going to bed at around 8 o'clock at night, obviously I wasn't staying up and putting crap in my head. Can you imagine like watching the news, feeding that into your head, and then you go to bed? One of the things that I knew about studying, especially in grad school, was that you retain things that you put into your head right before you go to bed. You retain those things better. So if I had a test the next day, I was reviewing my notes the night before and then sleeping on that data. Can you imagine putting chaos, trauma, disruption in your head and then going to sleep? Heck, in five years you'll have a PhD in chaos, trauma, and disruption. You're so good at it. You trained yourself well. Turn off the news. Better yet, turn off the TV. I like the idea of furniture facing each other, not all facing a wall with a screen on it. What a concept, right? A living room, not a TV room. Do you have a TV room or do you have a living room? Or a rec room, which means what? Recreation room. Where do you have your TV? And is all the furniture turned towards it? Can you imagine if people actually had to talk with each other? <gasps> oh, the horror, right? This is how I watch TV. I have a 55-inch LG flat screen. I have Netflix. I have Amazon. When I want to watch something, which is 9 times out of 10, an independent film, I turn the TV on. I enjoy it. Turn it off. TV should never be just background noise because it's feeding into your brain at all times. Subliminal messages. There was a book that came out in 1974 called Subliminal Seduction. And that's how various images are put into magazine covers and ads. That if you look close, you can see certain things. And the original one was like a uh, the form of a naked woman in ice cubes in a glass. And if you look at it, you turn it a certain way, you're like, oh yeah, that's a naked woman. Subliminal. There is communication through your brain, through your ears, through talking, that type of communication like I'm doing with you. And then there's subliminal. I invite you to look for the book, the PDF, wherever it is. And somebody should do another version of it, a, uh, in addition that is more of, uh, like this book was written back when print advertising was king. Now very few people read actual magazines. I'm probably the only person in the world who still reads magazines. Read the book Subliminal Seduction and see how things are communicating and putting data in your head without you even knowing it. And you will view the web, TV, and radio in a completely different way. Finish your coffee and I'll see you Monday morning on the Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason.